How's it going, Chip Tribe? It's me, Chips, here with the first rebranded episode of the Chip Tide Show. Now, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but I really like the Wii. Say what you will about motion controls, but this little white rectangle that could was home to some absolute classics. But, of course, not everything can be all sunshine and rainbows, because next to juggernauts like Mario Galaxy and Twilight Princess, there were also plenty of games on here that ranged from not so great to, uh, how should I put this lightly, uh, hot garbage. Now, these types of games come in all shapes and sizes, but I found that there is one genre able to consistently pump out games straight to the bottom of the barrel, and that, my friends, is game show games. There are more of these guys to count, but today, we're taking a look at some of my favorites. Or, least favorites? Ah, it doesn't matter. Well, let's get into it. So I'm sure I don't need to explain to you what game shows are. Everybody knows them, everybody loves them, and eventually certain game companies realize they can make a quick buck off them. Now, there's nothing to say that a video game based on a game show has to be bad. In fact, in theory, they should be great. But as you will soon see, that's not always the case. In honor of what we're doing this episode though, I thought I'd make a little game show of my own, and I call it the Chip Tide Show Lightning Round. So here's how it works. The first few games I have on my list all fall into the theme of pretty similar to the source material, and I don't have a lot to say about them. So we're gonna blow through them real quick. I guess it's not really a game, but it's got some jazzy music, so therefore it's cool. All right, here we go. We're starting off with a bang. The granddaddy of all game shows, it's Jeopardy! It's got all the trivia questions you know and love. Or trivia answers? Seriously though, like, what's up with that? Why don't you just ask the questions and then we don't have to worry about all this what is nonsense, but uh, I digress. But yeah, it's freaking Jeopardy and it plays exactly like Jeopardy. It gives you an answer, you give them a question. And you can even use the We Speak to answer with your voice. You know, assuming you're the one guy out there who actually owns one of those. But continuing with the Chip Guy Show lightning round, we've got another classic. It's time to spin that wheel and play some Hangman in a Wheel of Fortune. Remember everything I said about the last game? Yeah, you can pretty much copy and paste that for this. It looks nearly identical, it plays nearly identical, just replace trivia with Hangman and Gambling. It also even uses the We Speak. Man, the one proud owner of one of these bad boys is getting some serious mileage out of it. But yeah, literally don't have any new bits for this one, so let's just move on to round three of the Chip Tide Show Lightning Round with Family Feud. Now while this one looks different to the first two, it's pretty much the same in the sense that it plays just like the original. You and a squad of insane me's take on another squad of insane me's in... Well, I guess it's kinda trivia, right? Family Feud is a weird show, guys, but this game captures it all! And of course, what Family Feud game would be complete without the man himself, Steve Harvey? Oh wait, just one second. Who the heck is this guy? That ain't Steve. I mean, he's got the mustache, but where's the toothy grin? The incredulous look when someone gives a weird answer. And what's that on his head? But I put him on the thumbnail and everything. Yeah, you know what? You know what? If I can't play with my boy Steve, I just won't play anymore. Family Feud, you've lost your chance. We're moving on to the fourth and final round of the Chip Tide Show Lightning Round. And to complete our four horsemen of game show games that aren't super interesting, it's The Price is Right! And just like it's three brothers before it, this game plays just like the original show. It starts off with the Mies freaking out when they get chosen from the crowd, and then you play a series of price-related minigames. But here's the kicker for this one, none of it matters. I mean, 
These are all low budget Wii games, so I guess none of it really matters, but this one matters even less than usual. And that's because the value of the showcase in the final round is usually more than anyone has managed to collect at this point. So, that means you could go the whole game without earning a single penny, then be an absolute scumbag and just bet one dollar above your opponent and essentially have a 50-50 shot of winning the whole thing. Great job, guys! But, I think that's going to bring this installment of the Chip Tide Show Lightning Round to an end! I'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Good night! But, uh, don't leave just yet. The video's not over. That was just the opening bit to get through the kind of boring ones. We haven't even gotten to the real good stuff yet. And yeah, I did make all those sets just for one bit. One of it. But moving on from... Whatever that was. Those four games really weren't all that bad. The mechanics transfer over pretty well, so aside from not looking too hot and some host issues that I won't get back into, they can actually be kind of fun with a good group of friends. For a round or two at least. But these next three are where it gets really bad. Games that don't translate over to the video variety, so the producers had to get a bit creative. For the first one, buckle up, because we're going around the world on the amazing race. Now, if you've never seen the show before, basically you and a partner travel around the world doing all sorts of cool challenges as you try not to be the last one to finish. There's a large emphasis on travel and going to exotic places, and it's pretty cool. The video game version, on the other hand, is nothing like that. Instead, you go from bad minigame to bad minigame with some very basic travel and money management systems thrown in there. Now, it seems pretty bad, and it definitely is, but if you play your cards right, you might actually have some fun. The first thing you'll need is a friend. Oh, now let's see, who can I get to play this with me? There's, ah, there's gotta be someone around here. Oh, oh dear god. Fine. Richard, get over here. What? Yes, you have to. It's your job to play with me. Yeah. Yeah, I know they're bad. I prefaced that at the top of the show. Come on. It'll be fun. Trust me. Hey. Hey, Richard. Hey, where, where, where are you going? Don't run away from me. Get over here. We are traveling around the virtual world together if it's the last thing I do. Whew. Whew. Okay. Now that I'm back and I have a friend, or in my case, a hapless assistant, it's time to play. Now, you can either do competitive or co-op, and even though there is no world in which Rick and I would ever succeed as a team, I gotta say, co-op is the way to go. Next up, I recommend playing on the hardest difficulty, because it's more fun fighting against OP computers and crappy mechanics, barely evading elimination each time, than it is to just steamroll the whole game. And my last tip is to take the game way too seriously. Act like your very life is on the line, and the only thing between you and a grimsley end is this low-res Australian man. Do this, and with the right people in mindset, you're in for a good time. You'll laugh at how bad the minigames are, frantically argue about whether you should take a cheap cab, or spend the money on a sweet ride just for pure style, and cheer when you get last, only to realize it's a non-elimination round. Ah. <sighs> Oh, ho, ho, but now we're really leaving the realms of sanity and diving headfirst into the trash bin with Wipeout. If you haven't seen the show, basically it's people trying to go through impossible, over-the-top obstacles and getting bodied in the process. This game version is, as you probably guessed, a platformer. You know, like Mario. But unlike Mario, the mechanics just don't really work. But, like I said with the previous game, with the right people in mindset, this game can be a freaking blast. First of all, once again, do the hardest mode. Anything less is not worth it. And once again, if you don't have a friend to play with, just put it back. Actually, for this one, it's best if you can find three other friends for maximum chaos. But seeing as Richard and I are the only two people in this building, we'll take what we can get. Each game you play has four phases. Phase 1 is just a simple set of obstacles. And when I say simple, I mean near impossible. 
Take this first one, for example. A literal sea of spinning sweeper arms that if you so much as think about touching, your guy will instantly ragdoll and you die. But theoretically, if you have the control and precision of a god, you can make it through to the end. That is, assuming the other players don't kill you first. Because as you're trying to avoid death at every turn, the other players can use their pointers to shoot little tennis balls. Seems harmless enough, right? WRONG! Whether they just take you out with a swarm of balls, or aim for these little targets and make the obstacles 10 times harder than they already were, pretty much the only way that you're gonna make it out alive is if they let you. And you better believe I ain't never letting Richard get by. My balls will block out the sun! And yes, when it's my turn, I'll get slaughtered too, but thus is the way of the wipeout. And that, folks, was just the first obstacle. It only gets harder from there. So, after you inevitably fail every single obstacle, it's on to round two. Now what you're supposed to do here is wait for these sweeper arms to come around and either jump or duck under, staying alive as long as you can. But what you really should do is try and take matters into your own hands, using your body as a missile and launching yourself at your friends. You'll definitely fall, don't get me wrong, but you better believe I'm taking people down with me. Here I come, Richard. Round three is simultaneously my favorite and the least favorite. It seems simple, just get from one side to the other, no sweat. Ho ho ho, if only it were that easy. For starters, the perspective is all sorts of jank. I can't count the number of times I thought I made the perfect jump only to miss the platform completely. When you do fall off, it's back to throwing balls at whoever's still clinging to life, except now you've upgraded from tennis balls to straight up dodge balls, which can take people out in just a few hits. But the real problem with this round is that you literally cannot move on until three of the four people finish. If you fall off, it's right back to the beginning to try again. So basically, this round does not end until the people throwing balls get bored, and even then there's no guarantee that you'll make it. But once you finally made it out of purgatory as I like to call it, it's on to the big one, the wipeout zone, the ultimate test of the skills you've developed so far. It plays similar to the first round, except harder, darker, and more intense. I'm literally not even sure how they want you to beat some of these. The only way I ever did was when I glitched through the floor. But just like the last round, the ball throwers have gotten an upgrade, this time in the form of the big ball. If you connect with one of these bad boys, that's it. Lights out, thanks for playing, you lose. But here's the catch. You only get one ball per person per obstacle. The result is the most intense game of chicken you will ever see. You're immune to the balls when ducking, but you can also barely move, so you have to decide if you go for time and make a break for it, or if you play it safe and waddle your way across the whole thing. You could try to juke them out, but you could just as easily get 360 no scoped out of nowhere. My aim is perfect, don't even try me Richard. It's broken, it's OP, and it's hilarious. Just like the last one, at face value this game is terrible. But like Cole under pressure, with the right circumstances and mindset, this game becomes an entertainment diamond. But I saved the best for last because this game is notorious for being one of the worst on the console full stop. It's the game, the myth, the legend itself, Survivor. Now I love this show. It might even be one of my favorite shows just ever. You know how I call you guys the Chip Tribe? Well, I got that idea from this show. If you haven't seen the show before, half of it is cool challenges and the other half is a complex game of social politics in which you have to vote up members of your own tribe only for those people you screwed over to vote on the winner in the finale. It's super interesting to watch and if not for the whole surviving on an island with only the most basic human needs part, it would probably be pretty fun to do. So, how does the game stack up? Well, for starters, the whole strategy part, you know, the best part of the show, yeah, they just ignored all that. Nope, it's only the challenges. And I'm gonna be honest, 
I'm not sure if the people who made this game have ever seen an actual episode of the show before. For starters, none of the characters look like who they're supposed to be. I mean, I guess I can kind of tell that this guy is supposed to be the host Jeff Probst, but the contestants? Not so much. Like this guy. His name is Rob, which leads me to believe that he's supposed to be the famous Boston Rob, but he looks nothing like him and doesn't even have the Red Sox hat, which is like his signature thing. So I'm not sure. And then there's the challenges, which aren't like any challenges I've ever seen on Survivor. These things are freaking crazy. And as you probably guessed, this is a Wii game. So they're played using motion controls. But these aren't just any motion controls. Oh, no, 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 no. These are bad motion controls. As in half the time, they just straight up don't work. And even when they are working, they're still not great. Now, you might see this as an issue, but I think you're forgetting who you're talking to here. It is I, the one and only king of motion controls himself. If you think I'm going to be bested by a setback as minor as the controls not really working, watch and learn. See this wall here? Slash that wall. See these fish? Shoot the fish. See that tree? Chop the tree. Boat not steering right? Steer it better. Can't fly? Too bad, I can. Shark attack? Punch that shark. R Richard, my man, I hate to do it to you, but... No, actually, I love to do it to you. I'm gonna sweep you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Better luck next time, pal. But you know what the real twist here is? Despite all its issues, this might be the most fun game on the list so far. In fact, I think it's so fun because of all its problems. It's freaking hilarious watching your friend struggle to do anything until one of you figures out a weird sort of trick to get it to work and you dominate. In fact, the same thing can be said for every game on the list. It's like watching a bad movie with a couple of friends, but you love it anyway because it's super fun to laugh at. In fact, with games like this, it's almost like the worse the game, the better. The first ones we talked about weren't the best, for sure, but pretty much worked as intended and were kind of boring as a result. But playing games like Wipeout and Survivor with a couple of friends is a freaking blast. It honestly doesn't make any sense, but let's try to figure it out. If you cast your mind back to episode 5 of the show where we played Mario plus Rabbids, you'll remember the witchy G or the why is this game good equation. And in that episode, I concluded that if a game is fun, then it's good. So, are these games fun? Absolutely, but I refuse to believe that they qualify as good. I mean, look at this. Does whatever the heck this is deserve to stand alongside of Mario or Zelda? Absolutely not. <sighs> so, that must mean the witchy G is wrong then. But I think, after looking at all this... I figured it out. What makes a game good is much more complicated than simple fun factor, and honestly, it probably differs from person to person, so there is no concrete answer. But let me throw two more equations at you. Like doesn't equal good, and dislike doesn't equal bad. These games are bad for sure, but I still like them, and that's totally okay. And there are probably some games out there that are categorically very good that I just don't like that much, and that's also okay. And the same goes for all you guys out there. If you like something a lot and other people don't like it, don't be ashamed. If you can acknowledge the flaws in something, but are able to look past them and appreciate the thing all the same, good on ya. And if there's something out there that everybody loves and you just don't get, you don't have to get it. Just be respectful of other opinions, and we can all get along and enjoy these crappy games together. Man, that got a little deep for an episode on crappy versions of popular game shows, didn't it? Oh, hey, uh, also, Richard, everything I just said does not apply to you. Your opinions are categorically wrong, and I will never stop fighting you on them. But I think that just about wraps up everything I've got to say for this episode. And you know, this was a lot more productive than I thought it would be. We played a ton of weirdly fun games, spread some positive vibes, 
and I got to remind everyone once again why I am the undisputed king of motion controls. If you know of any other crappy Wii games like this, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, yes, yes, I know, there's a minute to win it game that is notoriously terrible, and I don't think I've ever wanted a game so bad in my entire life. But with that, it's time to bring this episode to a close. If you enjoyed, let me know by leaving a comment down below, and if you want to be notified when the next episode of the show comes out, you can click that subscribe button. New episodes of the show go up every three weeks on Thursdays at 2 p.m. EST, so mark your calendars and get ready, because it's a big one. And I will see you then, but until then, don't forget to take it easy. The king, you say? We'll see.